So good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, my name is Matthew Carroll. I'm the campaigns director with LeadNow.ca. Uh, LeadNow is an online advocacy organization, uh, and we've been working together with our colleagues at Some of Us um, over the last uh, couple of weeks to run a campaign against FIPA, uh, which is the, uh, the trade deal that's been negotiated between, between Canada and China. Uh, we're very honored today to be joined um, by Peter Julian MP, who's the NDP's um, critic for natural resources, Jeff Reagan, who's the critic for the Asia Pacific Gateway with the Liberal Party of Canada, and of course Elizabeth May MP, who's the leader of the Green Party of Canada. We've invited them here today to receive this petition that has now been signed by over 60,000 Lead Now and some of us supporters uh, from coast to coast to coast. The response to the campaign, uh, which has sent Prime Minister Harper and opposition leaders, all of these messages, shows that Canadians are deeply concerned about this investor deal, which has gone through with little debate, no consultation with the provinces and First Nations, and no vote in Parliament. China is just as important as the United States, and we should really be treating this treaty uh, with just the same level of public scrutiny and debate as NAFTA. Companies are using these agreements to overturn or present democratic decisions with massive financial cost for citizens um, when other similar agreements have been negotiated. Uh, for example, in Canada, in one of the first NAFTA Chapter 11 claims, Canada banned the import and export of interprovincial trade of a gasoline additive called MMT for health reasons uh, due to the chemicals interference with catalytic converters in automobiles. Now, that was obviously a good thing for us to do for the health of Canadians. But under the terms of the settlement uh, which resulted, Canada reportedly paid about 16 million in damages to the investor's reputation. So what we're, we'll see with this deal is um, a situation where foreign companies can sue Canadian governments of all levels if we do things that stand up for people's rights. Another problem is that investor arbitration processes are unaccountable and favor the bigger country. This agreement is especially secretive and extreme because the arbitration processes can occur in total secrecy with only minimal information about the awards being made available to the public after the fact. And that's one of the reasons that we're seeing so many Canadians concerned about this deal. Other countries such as Australia are moving away from investor state arbitration because it limits democratic decision making and exposes citizens to undue and unnecessary risks. Why is Canada moving backwards on this issue while other countries are moving forwards? Taken together, our community sees the next and scenic takeover um, as a serious problem that would shift Canada's energy, economy and environment towards foreign control with minimal ability to create better results for Canadians without proper debate or an understanding of the risks. That the Canada-China FIPA has a 31-year term and will bind Canadians is especially outrageous. Canada really should be able to implement common sense environmental protections, invest in Canadian jobs or stop dangerous projects without the threat of being sued by a massive multinational. That's why our community is calling for the Canada-China FIPA to be rejected and reconsidered. And that's why we're here today to deliver this petition um, to the opposition leaders. We did invite someone from the Prime Minister's office. Unfortunately, they were uh, not forthcoming uh, in, in meeting with us today. So um, I'd like to present you, uh, the three of you, with this petition, uh, which has been signed by over 60,000 Canadians from coast to coast to coast. Um, we had some, uh, some larger copies, unfortunately they didn't arrive in time, but we will be providing those uh, to, the, to the MPs afterwards. Um, I'm also going to invite Emma, who's the campaign, Canadian campaigner with some of us, um, to just read a quick quote from one of our community. Great. So my name is Emma Pullman. I'm the Canadian campaigns director, sorry, um, with some of us, a global corporate watchdog organization. Um, we launched a letter to the editor writing campaign a few days ago in response to the massive um, response that we received to this campaign. Thousands of people have written letters to the editor, and some of them are being published um, today even. Um, and one letter stuck out to me a lot. It was uh, from a man named Robert Pittman in Surrey. He writes, I was born in British Columbia 78 years ago. I've lived in Canada all my life, served in the RCAF, and until recently have always been proud of my country. Now I find we have a prime minister who, for some obscure reason, appears to hate Canada and what they have stood for. He seems to be determined to sell Canada to the highest bidder with no regard to our sovereignty or security, nor to the democratic workings of our parliament. This is not the Canada I have loved. Um, 
So we'd now like to just give a couple of minutes to each of the opposition uh, MPs who were kind enough to join us here today uh, to respond to the concerns of the Canadians within our community. Um, first of all, Mr. Peter Julian. Uh, merci beaucoup. Là, ça démontre effectivement de la manque de démocratie de ce gouvernement que là, ils essaient d'imposer un traité de, de protection étrangère sans avoir un débat au Parlement et sans avoir euh, effectivement un vote du Parlement. Euh, notre critique en matière de commerce international dans des vices, depuis les débuts, a proposé au niveau du comité qu'on a des, des débats, on a des témoins, que effectivement, on a une réelle considération de ce traité et toutes les implications qui vont dérouler de ce traité-là. Et le gouvernement, jusqu'à maintenant, a refusé systématiquement. Là, on a plus que 60 000 Canadiens qui disent effectivement que là, on devrait avoir un débat démocratique au Parlement et effectivement, la consultation publique de savoir toutes les, les implications de ce cette, euh, cette projet de loi, de cette, ce cette traité, euh, devrait être considéré. Nous avons un gouvernement maintenant that is refusing normal democratic process. And we've seen this with the FIPA, where Don Davies, our trade critic, has brought forward at the committee level and also in Parliament a call for debate, a call for witnesses, a call for due consideration of the, the FIPA, uh, FIPA with Canada and China, and yet the government has refused systematically that type of democratic consideration. 60,000 Canadians today are saying very loudly and clearly that the government needs to respect Parliament, respect democracy, have that debate, have that vote in Parliament. And uh, the NDP stands with those 60,000. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'd also like to invite uh, Mr. Jeff Reagan to say a few words. Uh, merci beaucoup. Uh, je précise beaucoup les efforts uh, de Lead Now et leurs invitations à cette réunion, cette rencontre. Uh, Le Parti libéral, euh, nous voulons avoir l'échange et l'investissement avec la Chine euh, et avec le reste du monde, mais il faut avoir les bonnes règles, les bons accords. Et quand euh, le gouvernement euh, développe euh, un, un traité, un accord avec un, avec un pays comme la Chine, euh, il faut que ce soit discuté dans le Parlement, discuté par le par les Canadiens. Il faut avoir un débat. Euh, la situation maintenant qu'on voit, euh, c'est que on a, on a le, roi, le roi Stephen qui utilise son prérogatif euh, royal euh, pour, euh, pour forcer euh, cet accord euh, sur le pays. Euh, nous sommes, euh, comme Parti libéral, nous avons euh, dans le, le comité des, des, des échanges, des, des affaires étrangères, euh, mon collègue euh, Wayne Easter euh, a, a, a réussi à avoir un peu d'un débat, un très peu des discussions avec les, euh, euh, les fonctionnaires du gouvernement pour discuter euh, ce qui est dans l'accord, mais c'était seulement une heure et c'était arrêté par le gouvernement. Alors, euh, nous sommes préoccupés qu'il faut avoir un débat. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to be here today and I want to thank Lead Now for their efforts on this issue. Uh, the Liberal Party uh, favors uh, trade and investment uh, with other countries. However, we believe that we have to have discussion, we have to have an open process uh, for examining and debating uh, a, an agreement like this that provides, that will last for, for three decades and uh, provides new rules and a new process uh, in relationship with China. It's very important, we believe, that, 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 uh, that there be a good process for that and that there be a debate here in Parliament and, and an examination of this agreement by committee. Uh, my colleague, the uh, Liberal uh, International Trade critic Wayne Easter, uh, was successful um, uh, in having a, a brief discussion with government officials about the accord, but it only lasted one hour. And other than that, the, the government has, has not allowed any discussion. Uh, and that we find that's very undemocratic. undemocratic. What we essentially have here is that uh, King Stephen has used the royal prerogative to ram this through. And we're very concerned that that's not democratic. Thank you. Il reste seulement trois jours avant le moment quand le premier ministre a le pouvoir pour avoir le pouvoir pour euh, 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 rendre en vigueur ce traité avec d'investissement avec la Chine. Euh, le temps presse. Euh, je suis très très heureuse d'être ici aujourd'hui avec mes collègues parlementaires parce qu'à ce moment nous avons les partis en opposition en, en solidarité contre ce traité d'investissement avec la Chine. 
We are running out of time. Uh, as soon as Friday, the Prime Minister will have sat out the 21 sitting days, during which time the treaty has been placed before Parliament on a don't look, don't touch, don't talk basis, and certainly don't vote. This violates previous tradition in this country, constitutionally over the last number of decades, no matter whether the treaty was required to have a parliamentary vote, if it was seen as important, as in the case of the Kyoto Protocol, for example, it went to a vote before Parliament. This government has chosen to take the single most important and I will say clearly dangerous investment treaty Canada has ever entered into and has chosen to make this document virtually secret. No press release when it was tabled in the House, no technical briefings for members of Parliament, no debate, no discussion and no vote. And right now we have to make sure Canadians tell Mr. Harper, no way, we have a few days left, we have to stop the ratification.